First Peter 1 and 1 To the strangers scattered Israelite foreigners I want to give all the honor, glory, and praises unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rabbacha, Kodash Double honor to my elders at Great Millstone Talk with this truth through the spirit Sing honors to the elect Peace and blessings be to all the sense of men, women, and children The Duke of Sister, the one-third, Shalom Pardon me one moment this video is to inform and go into how the Hebrew Israelites, the so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans today, would be the Gentiles back during the time of antiquity, meaning in ancient times, when the Messiah, whom the world ignorant calls Jesus, was on the scene, whose name is Yahweh Shai, who is a dark-skinned man, was roaming the earth. During that time, when the Lord referred to the lost sheep, of the house of Israel, it referred to the nation of Israel who lost their way, who lost their way from their power. Forgive me, I hate when I keep forgetting to cut my notifications off. Right? Meaning that, <clears throat> matter of fact, through the Spirit, there's a, um, it's in Jeremiah 17 and 4, the Lord said, Thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage. And that goes back to Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth. If you read First Maccabees, the first chapter, it speaks about how we cannot keep the high holy days. We cannot circumcise our children. If they caught us, they would um torture us. You know, they 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 dropped our infants from tall high walls and Watch them bust their heads open. It's no different than what the eating my man, so called white man, has done to our children today. When, well, actually, during this time when the Native Americans suffered the same kind of fate, when they would cut the unborn child's stomach from the woman's body and smash their head against the pavement, right? Same ordeal. But the reason why I'm bringing this out is because we have a lot of so called modern day Christians today, well, modern day Christians today, who try to graft in the strangers as in those are heathen nations. But no, the strangers are talking about Hebrew Israelites, and I'm going to prove that. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into it. This is First Peter chapter one, verse one through two. Peter, an apostle of Yahusha Mashiach, to the strangers. Remember that word scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Elect. Whew. It's only for the elect. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shabmashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Beautiful blessing. This is the point though. The word strangers. It says to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Remember, there is a book called Galatians, which is written to who? The Israelites, the strangers that's been scattered abroad. Now, I'm in the blue letter, so I'm going to go into the concordance, so to say, right? Now, I'm going to go into that word stranger really quick. Pardon, bear with me. Now, let's see how they pronounce it. Strong's G, 3927. Parepidemas. 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 And that pretty much means one who comes from a foreign country into a city or land to reside there by the side of the natives. Right? We got to remember Alexander the Great, Alexander the Crete, Alexander the Free, whatever you want to call him. He did an, ex uh, an expedition. He was running. His feet didn't touch the ground, so to say, proverbially. He was pretty much taking over the known world during that time. Because 722 BC, you had King Shalomanasser, who took the northern kingdom to the other side of the earth, which is spoken of in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, which is where people would call the, um, the Aztecs, the Incas, and the Mayans, those would be the northern kingdom. The Spanish-speaking tribes today, or the Native Native Americans today, those would be the Northern Kingdom that was sent off, right? But anyhow, so you go into the word sojourn, we would be aliens, we would be strangers. Why? Because we're not in our 
and our land and we're taking on their customs so we became tributary to them. Okay? Now, let me do you one even better. I have to go to my 1611 King James Version Bible. Now I'm going to go to the book of Tobit, the 13th chapter. Okay? Bear with me. Tobit 13, chapter 1. Chapter 13, verse 1 through 3. Forgive me. Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, Yahweh, and blessed be his kingdom. For he doth scourge and hath mercy. He leadeth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. It comes to point. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us among them. Let that seek in. Confess him before the Gentiles. They mean that we're amongst them. Ye children of Israel, for he hath scattered us amongst them. So, prime example. If a man, let's say this, um, let's say a man's father moves from China to here in the early 1900s, let's say 1920. If they have, if, if he have grand, great grandchildren, meaning that like three or four generations after him, do you think they're going to carry the same customs from China? They may, traditionally, but then they're going to also take on customs of America, right? You may catch them standing up um, when they, whenever they play, what is it, a national anthem before a game or something, stand up and play it to the flag and all the other BS, right? Because they have to adapt to that environment that's what our people were doing that's why we speak of timothy people say oh timothy was a greek no he wasn't when they refer to his father as a greek that means his father was a hellenist meaning it was a greek speaking jew or a jew that took on greek customs by nature by biology he was an israelite nonetheless the so-called negro latinos and native americans are still israelites because they come from the seed of abraham isaac and jacob how do we know? We're the only people on earth that fit the curses. Don't nobody want to talk about the curses, but everybody want the blessings. Stop it. Right? Now, let's go into a little history really quick, and I'm going to get back to it. Tobit 1 and 1. This is in the Apocrypha, which is a part of the 1611 King James Version Bible, people. I don't want to make this lesson too long, but I got to make sure I'm on. Tobit 1 and 1. The book of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiah, the son of Ananiah, the son of Aduel, the son of Gabael, of the seed of Asael, of the tribe of Naphtali. Notice Naphtali is a northern tribe, right? So that means the northern kingdom was still here before they was departed. Verse 2. Who in the time of Anamassar, king of the Assyrians, was led captive out of Thisbe, which is at the right hand of that city, which is called properly Naphtali in Galilee above Asher, which Asher is another northern kingdom. So do you know this was happening before the departure of the northern kingdom? Now I'm going to jump down. I had to read that. This is Tobit chapter 1, verse 15. Now when Enamassar was dead, Sennacherib, his son, reigned in his stead, whose estate was troubled, that I could not go into Media. Media. The reason why I would bring it up because I have to go here. They refer to him at um, Sennacherib as his son. That was not his son. I had to do a little research. Shalom Manasseh V, who would have been in a Manasseh t-shirt with the border of your fringes is not. Go ahead, Elder. <laughs> I see you, Elder. Um... I'm putting this out raw. Shadow Manasseh fifth, which would be and a Manasseh, which was in Tobit, for not if I'm not mistaken, was the brother of Sargon the second. If I'm not mistaken, Sargon the second killed him. Then in Sargon the second, his his son took his stead, which would be Sennacherib. All right, so that's from what I've gotten from a little research. I could possibly be wrong, but please, um. You know, um, do your research yourself or correct me if I'm wrong. But notice the time of the Sargonai dynasty, 722 through 609 BC. The northern kingdom was departed, 722 to um, like 720 BC. Because when, when, you, when you're in the time frame of BC, as time goes on, the numbers decline, which goes up to AD um, Adonai, um, Demi 
I forgot how to pronounce it, which pretty much is the year of our Lord, A.D. People say B.C. before Christ, which we don't say Christ, but it was really B.C.E. before common era, then A.D., year of our Lord. All right. Even people who today claim, oh, I'm, I'm not Christian. I, 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 I'm atheist. I'm agnostic. But you still say A.D. and you don't even know what to stand for. Year of our Lord. <laughs> the return of our Lord. Right. But anyhow, so let's go back to it. The reason why I brought that out to, to bring it back into this to fruition. The strangers are Israelites because we've been scattered all over. All right. Since, read the book of Kings. Since the book of Kings, we've just been scattered all over. Okay, going back to First Peter, chapter one, verse one. Peter, an apostle of Yahweh Shammashiach, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, to the strangers, to the strangers. All right, let me do you. Let me do you another one. Where you at? Come on now, James one and one. James, a servant of God and of the Lord, Yahweh Shammashiach, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. To the twelve tribes that are scattered abroad, greeting. Now, like I said, I don't want to make this long, but I have to read this, this excerpt, these passages for you to get a better understanding of what I was um, getting at had we been scattered. Acts chapter 2 verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men. Devout meaning that we they reverence God, Yahweh, Yahweh Shema Shai, out of every nation under heaven. So in other words, these are Israelite men. They were devout. Meaning that they believed in Yahweh, but they came out of every nation out of heaven. Why? Because we've been scattered, people. Listen. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galile um, Galileans? And now hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Meaning that they hear that, they hear that same language being spoken to them where they, were, where they come from, but they were devout. In Yahweh. Hearken. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus in Asia. Remember what I read in Peter? Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers, once again, of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes. And Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Fire. Let's keep going. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. <laughs> but Peter, I like the, um, the reference, Joel 2, 28 through 32. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea. Or all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Or if I'm not mistaken, that would be uh, the third hour from the first ray of sunlight. I speak as a man when I say that. though. Verse 16, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, say of God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Sound familiar, right? That was Joel. And all my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And that's beautiful. Because the brother um, GMS Awakening 144 Bar, he had, a, he had a video titled that his four-year-old daughter prophesied. Man, that just put a smile on my face. I didn't get to listen to it or watch I was at work, but that put a smile on my face, man. Verse 19, And I will shew wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The point is coming up, y'all. Remember, he's speaking to the man in Judea from all nations under the heaven, right? Devout men who were Jews. Listen. 
The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's why you got to read context. Now here comes the point. The focal point of this passage. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So that's who he was speaking to. The men of Israel. The strangers that were scattered abroad. Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourselves also know. I would keep reading on, but it's, it's an ongoing passage. But that's the point. All that was spoken of was spoken of to who? The men of Israel. Because they were the strangers that were scattered abroad. Okay? So no, you heathens have nothing to do with our blessings. You will be in the kingdom of heaven, but I'd be damned if you'd be ruling. You shall be servants. But with that being said, I pray you was edified and fed. Stay in the spirit. Don't fear it. Just endure it. Ask for forgiveness. Pray without ceasing. Stay humble. Remain diligent. Quamashallah. More flubber ball. Shalom.